Ahoy hoy brothers, Avi here. So I was looking for a topic for this video about St. Regis Montana and its paleontological history when I stumbled across something rather intriguing. You see, in researching, I found my way to the geology and mineral deposits of the St. Regis Superior Area, Mineral County, Montana. <laughs> it's a geological survey bulletin published by Arthur B. Campbell in the 1960s. And what I found out taught me something I definitely wasn't aware of. Today, we're going to talk about the Precambrian Belt series. <laughs> So, what is the Precambrian Belt Series? According to the aforementioned Geological Survey Bulletin, quote, this area is underlain by about 50,000 feet of metasedimentary rocks of the Precambrian Belt Series. This stratigraphic column comprises one of the most complete sections of the belt rocks in northern Idaho and western Montana. Not very much information, it just mentions it. But I was inspired to dig deeper, and this is what I was able to find out. First of all, why is it called the Precambrian Belt Series? This seems to be because it is a major division of rock dated to the Precambrian era, the time period stretching from 3.8 to 450 million years ago, ending with the Precambrian extinction that paved the way for the major explosion of life known as the Cambrian Explosion. So that explains the Precambrian bit, but Belt Series? What a weird name. It comes from the fact that a major division of rock that mainly appears in the Montana area is known as the Belt Mountain Range. But that still doesn't explain how and why the Precambrian Belt Series formed in the first place. The reason we believe that the Precambrian Belt Series was formed is as follows. 1.5 billion years ago, during the late Precambrian era, shallow seas with extensive nearshore flats had great amounts of minerals deposited into them via the flow of mud and sand from streams and, due to the frequent rain that fell, they pooled into shallow lakes in what would later be northwest Montana. Eventually, species of blue-green algae that grow in mats called cyanobacteria accumulated in shallow nearshore habitats. Despite the increasingly tumultuous environment, the cyanobacteria lived on, and often trapped fine particles of calcium carbonate, which eventually led to the formation of structures called stromatolites whose surfaces often displayed, quote, mud cracks, ripple marks, and sometimes the spatter marks of primeval raindrops. Later still, these structures slowly sank over the next 100 million years, forming a geological basin in which, quote, the belt supergroup sediments accumulated as much as 10 miles thick. And according to the Montana Department of Transportation, or MDT, quote, the rocks are common in northern and central Idaho and in western Montana, and usually take on ground, gray, red, green, purple, and yellow colors, and locally form dramatic cliffs where resistant, well-cemented sandstones are exposed in the canyon. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Precambrian Belt Series, and thanks so much for watching Paleontology Across the U.S. Sources in the description.